Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to work with multiple clips of different sizes in Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is more of an informational tutorial. I'm gonna be going over basically how I would tackle a problem like this. This is a really common problem too. You know, so a lot of times you record with different devices. Different devices sometimes have different uh, dimensions like 1080p, 720p, or 4K, 2K, etc. So what I'm gonna be going over is how you would combine these in a really fast and simple manner. So if you notice over here in the left, what we have is we have four pieces of footage. The first one is 1080p, this is also 1080p, this is 2K, and then this is 4K. So if we took one of these pieces and we dragged it onto the timeline, it's gonna look good. It's going to create a sequence that is 1080p, but that's a problem because the sequence is 1080p. That means if I drag, for example, this 2.7K footage over, it's going to be slightly zoomed in you'll notice that if I zoom this out some, I have room on the edges. And then if I dragged this next piece of footage, which is 4K, you'll notice I have a lot of room on the edges. What happens if you had, you know, 60, 70, 80 clips that you wanted to add to a timeline? You don't wanna have to rescale every single one of these. So there's a couple of things that you can do to rescale them. And we're gonna go over that in just a second, but I wanted to sort of put a note onto your timeline size. Understand that you probably want to create the timeline for the lowest resolution you have. So for example, in this sense, 1080p is my lowest resolution. The reason is that you can downscale 4K footage to 1080p and it's still going to look great. It's actually gonna look better than if you had filmed it in 1080p on the camera. And that just goes with sampling. There's more information for it to average out so it looks a little crisper, a little bit cleaner. However, the reverse does not usually work. So let's say if we deleted out of this sequence right here and we dragged the 4K footage in and then tried to drag the 1080p footage in. To make that fit, this giant sequence, I'm going to have to scale it up. Scale up to 204, right around 200, I believe, yeah, at 200 to get it to fit. Anything past, basically, 115 is going to start really having some effect. So you can see, if I bring this into full screen, we're going to get some strong pixelation around the edges of this, and it's not going to look very good. I can start seeing some blockiness around the edges right here. And so... If you try to scale your footage up, you'll lose quality, where if you try to scale it down, you won't. So that's something to understand, is that if you can, go with the lowest. That's the first step. The second tip is what I was talking about earlier. So let's say we have all this footage. Let's go ahead and recreate our, our let's say, uh, the 1080p, because that's the one we want to stick with. And we drag in our next piece, which is also... Um, or not that one, we drag in this one, which is also 1080p, drag in this one, which is 2K, and then we drag in this one, which is 4K. So we drag all of this in, and now you can see that it's still doing the zoom effect. So what we can do is we can hit Control A to select everything in the, the sequence right here, go up to Clip, and then down to what we want to do is go to Modify, Then we go up to clip and then down to video options and we can hit two buttons here. We can hit set to frame and scale to frame. If we hit scale to frame, it's going to adjust the footage to the, to the frame without actually adjusting the scale on it. So what do I mean? If I click, let's go with set to frame and I'll show you. So if we hit set to frame, and now I click on this footage that it just scaled to the frame. You'll notice that it set this to 71. It set it to the frame. Where if I had hit scale to frame, this would still be at 100, but it would fit. So basically what it does is it takes the footage and it drags it down without actually affecting the, um, the controls over here. It just sort of rewrites the controls. 100% is now 1080p instead of 4K. I like to always use set because I like to have control over my scale. I like to know how much it's been scaled back and how much it might be scaled forward. Um, it just gives you a little bit more knowledge and I don't think there's any really disadvantage to it except that you're gonna have some weird numbers in here for different pieces of footage. But that's what I like to do, is click the set to frame. And now you'll notice all of these fit like they should. This is what the original uh, framing of this was. That though can also be a little bit tedious. So what you can do, and this is something you need to do before you import your footage. So what I'm gonna do is delete all of my footage out here. Is I'm gonna go up to file, or actually edit, preferences, and then down to media right here. Once you open up this, depending on the version you have, um, I believe this is also in the general in like CS6 and CS5, but now it's in media, and sometimes it's a checkbox on a couple versions back, but now it is in this right here. And it's always gonna be something called like default media scaling or auto scale media. And what that does is it's going to 
by default auto scale. So you saw in the first part when I dragged in the 4K footage how it was really big. When I dragged in the 1080p footage, it was really small. Well, if we go to default media scaling, we can put a default on here. Let's go with set to frame size. Click OK. And you can also do the scale to frame size if you do like the 100. I just, like I said, like the set. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to import my four pieces of footage right here. And now all I need to do is create a sequence. We're going to create it again on the smallest one, which is the 1080p footage. And then now I can drag in the rest of the pieces right here. If I highlight them all and drop them in. And you'll notice it does all the scaling for me. This is perfectly scaled at 71 to fit the frame. And then this one is scaled at 50 to fit the frame as well. So that is another quick way to do this. And then once you have all this set, you don't really need to do anything else uh, rendered out just like normally, which is like, you know, if you render this out, um, you can just go with match bitrate, H.264, and whatever your sequence size is, and it'll do the rest. It'll do the downscaling and the upscaling for you. So that is really the basics of how to edit with multiple of them. Remember that you probably want to go with the smallest clip that you have just because downscaling always preserves while upscaling always loses. However, if you're like creating something for specifically for a 4K sort of production and you have a one 1080p piece, a 1080p piece, then you probably don't want to do that. You maybe just want to try to scale that up or do something else with it. But my general rule of thumb is as long as the like this is HD or whatever, use the lowest resolution. And then make sure that you you know, save yourself some time by setting that default or putting it all in there and hitting control A and then doing it manually. Both of those will make it really easy for you. So you don't have to sit there and try to rescale by going up and dragging this until it looks like it fits. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below on our website at adobemasters.net. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm making a video every other day on Adobe related products. And until next time, guys, see ya.